All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to the Alertus webinar series. My name is Jamie Underwood, Director of Marketing Communications at Alertus Technologies. Today's session will provide an Alertus Emergency Mass Notification System Overview, including a look at our digital signage and cable TV override solutions. We ask that you please hold all questions to the end of the webinar. However, feel free to type any questions in the chat box during the presentation, and we'll be sure to come back to those during the Q&A at the end of the session. This webinar is being recorded, so please email marketing at alertus.com if you're interested in receiving video from today's webinar. I would now like to turn it over to today's webinar presenter, Alertus' National Sales Director, Brian Oakley. Thank you very much, Jamie, and I uh, appreciate everybody taking the time to join us this morning to learn a little bit more about Alertus and also our uh, cable TV and digital signage over override uh, capabilities. Uh, for the purpose of this webinar, uh, the first part will be either new or review for, uh, for some of our customers and, and prospects, uh, where we'll review the Alertus system, touch on a lot of the capabilities, uh, challenges and problems we solve, uh, as well as uh, going through a focus on digital signage and desktop to uh, provide a little bit more insight on how we're able to integrate and bring a lot of those assets you have on campus together for a unified activation. So a quick overview of the webinar. We'll do a, a touch on the Alertus background. We'll touch on emergency notification challenges, a lot of the challenges that we help our customers solve that they communicate to us that we're instrumental in, in making sure that we're able to get the word out in an emergency. Uh, we'll touch on codes and market demand, a little bit of uh, uh, insight into what's driving uh, the adoption of emergency mass notification, what are some of the uh, rules and regulations that go along with that that help guide you in deploying that. Uh, and then also, uh, what's really pulling, pulling demand? Uh, we're finding that it's more than just the codes. Uh, the next will be the Lotus Solution Overview, and then we'll focus uh, on the uh, digital signage and cable TV override capability. At the end, we'll finish with a demo where you'll see the uh, override capability. We'll do that with a panic button activation that uh, simulates an intruder alert, and that'll take over a cable TV feed that we have here in our alerts demo room. So to touch on the alerts background, we're a pioneer in integrated audiovisual alerting for all hazards. So what does that mean? We get the word out in the event of an emergency. Uh, the images on the right there are a tornado uh, that went through the University of Maryland back in 2002, uh, 2001 time frame. This is really one of the emphasis for founding of Alertus. Our founders were there, both technical and more business uh, type, type students. They got together and said there's really got to be a way to get the word out very quickly and efficiently in the event of an emergency. Uh, what really moved them to act was this tornado uh, hit one of the portable classrooms where two students were. Uh, were working on a project and, and, uh, and they lost their lives uh, and chiefly um, because they did not know that there was a tornado alert in progress. So that translates very, very easily and very quickly to other alerts on campus, whether it's an active shooter, uh, whether, you know, it's something, there's a, an event that happens near campus that affects your, your campus, your, your building participants, those kind of things. So it translates extremely well. Uh, once founding in 2002, we've really grown and, and, uh, and brought on a lot of different customers, a lot of different ver verticals. Uh, obviously, college campuses are a, uh, a big source of uh, customers and, and users for us. We also uh, have a lot of military bases, large facilities, uh, the U.S. Capitol, um, quite a few uh, commercial corporate uh, campuses as well. And we're headquartered in the D.C. area, so we keep close tabs on the uh, regulations, the, uh, the communication protocols, those kind of things coming out of IPAWS, FEMA, some of the agencies that are really working to standardize communications uh, across multiple platforms. So how do you communicate in an emergency? Let's take a look at this. Uh, you've probably put together or assembled various uh, means of communicating. Maybe they've been purchased by other departments. Uh, be it either uh, digital signage, maybe there's a cable TV system, uh, Facebook and Twitter, uh, desktop pop-ups, uh, fire alarms, you know, text and email services through, through partners of ours, uh, PA systems on campus, just a lot of different options for getting the word out. But, you know, how do you really integrate and bring those together? Uh, how long does it take to activate? 
who owns those technology and how do you get in and, and effectively uh, send that message to be able to get that out very effectively. So there's a lot of assets. How do you bring that bring that all together? Well, Lotus provides console for activating that unified activation, and then interface points to all these different things pictured, whether it's text and email services, digital signage and cable TV, which we'll cover today, your fire alarms, outdoor giant voice, uh, VoIP phones, uh, you name it. We're able to activate and uh, control those elements in an emergency and do it very quickly and efficiently. So most of our customers come to us and say, hey, I've got all these assets, but it takes me up to 30 minutes to coordinate all of them being activated. So realistically, there's a lot of things we don't activate because we just take the, the, the top couple notification modes. Or if they do activate all of them, it takes quite a while to activate them. And then when there's an all clear or an update to the event, that cascading effect continues to take a long time. And what, they, what our customers have told us that in emergencies, especially where seconds count, this isn't acceptable. When there's emergencies where you've got a little bit more time to uh, get that message out, it's still unacceptable because instead of focusing on the event, resolving that event, protecting lives, you're working on trying to get that message out. So Alertus can coordinate all these different systems, get that message out instantaneously, and allow you to focus where you really need to focus is on containing the threat and continuing to update everybody within uh, your campus or buildings so that they can make the right choices uh, to, to, uh, to barricade or save their, their lives as well. So some of the other challenges that our customers share with us that we, we help to resolve is, you know, when they've got different locations or buildings with, with no way to notify. So they don't have a PA system in there where, where they can jump on the microphone. They don't, don't have uh, technology in there to notify people. Alertus can retrofit facility, and we'll talk about some of the Alertus endpoints like the Alertus, Alertus Alert Beacon, our LED marquees, those kind of things, to provide notification inexpensively with, and retrofit those facilities so that you can provide at least a basic level of notification to buildings that have no way to notify today without having to go out and find huge capital budgets to, uh, to make a project happen. The next is buildings not staffed 24-7. Alertus is a network-based system, so we're able to use the network to communicate with buildings um, and, and activate either from a uh, mobile phone, from a web-based browser, from the internet, uh, and reach those buildings that aren't staffed 24-7 so we can jack in and take over that PA system. We've got desktop uh, and digital signage solutions uh, that will take over existing assets in that building, uh, VoIP phone notifications. So those buildings that aren't staffed, we can, through the network, reach those and get the message out very quickly and efficiently through all notification assets that you have available. Uh, the other one that comes up quite often in government, a lot of uh, college campuses, in, in large organizations in general, is how do we notify people with different abilities, special needs individuals that uh, need an audio or visual notification to be able to fully comprehend and, and make decisions based upon the word. Uh, the alert system is, is focused on delivering the message in multi multimodal, multimedia uh, outlets so that differently abled individuals can receive that message, how they communicate, how they best communicate. The next is loud environments. This, this could be either a loud shop environment at a uh, technical school, this could be a manufacturing environment where the sound levels preclude having a PA system or speaker. You need visual alerting options like the alert peak and the LED marquee. We're able to provide those visual alert notification capabilities. And if there are any digital signage or cable TV uh, endpoints in that building, in that location, we'll also be able to take that over and provide a visual alert. Uh, cell phones not allowed. This is this is rare, but uh, is still something that we'll, we'll see. At college campuses that, uh, one, maybe have teachers that, that if you had this cell phone, you would preclude, you would be uh, impact, negatively impacting your grade. Uh, sometimes in your healthcare facilities where certain uh, facilities like your uh, MRI machines and those kind of things where you, you're uh, not able to take your cell phones into those, those rooms, there's a, a variety of different situations. Manufacturing plants a lot of times reduce the cell phone usage to uh, curb uh, disasters or, uh, or accidents uh, where people might be uh, distracted. Also, difficulty in reaching visitors and contractors. This is huge because traditionally a lot of our customers start with a text or email service. Well, if you don't have your email and text message for a visitor or a contractor, how are they going to get the word? You're, you're just relying on them, uh, somebody else relaying the word to them. Uh, you know, that's, that's really leaving a lot up to chance. 
And those are sometimes your most important people, especially visitors on a campus, your customers, your, uh, your potential students, parents, uh, whoever that is, those are the people that you really want to make sure you're notifying in event of emergency so that they know that you've got their best interest at heart. So a quick uh, review of the codes. There's two codes that we find that are really driving the adoption of mass notification and providing some uh, uh, framework on how you deploy mass notification. Private sector is NFPA, National Fire Protection Association. They recently added a chapter to their, their codes that are adopted across the country that provides input on uh, how you would deploy mass notification and Alertus provides compliance with that. Uh, one of the major uh, focuses of the code is a multimodal tiered notification process and they say integration with all these systems is really the, the, the preferred method to be able to activate these all uh, very quickly and effectively. So you'll actually see in the NFPA code book a picture of the alert beacon as a uh, device that provides the audiovisual notifications uh, that, that go with the, uh, the mass notification capabilities that they're looking for organizations to deploy and building, the, building those codes around. The other is unified facilities criteria. This is uh, for our DOD and uh, government uh, customers. This details out exactly how uh, mass notification should be deployed in, the, in government facilities. They, they're kind of similar. Obviously, the government takes it to a new level with uh, details uh, for UFC, but they also they both provide guidance on how to deploy mass notification. The last one we're seeing is actually the largest market demand is, you know, individuals now expect a certain level of safety when visiting a location or on the job. So this is organizations acknowledging that, like yours, and said, hey, mass notification is a priority because it's strategic to our business. Uh, we're, we're not going to be able to track the students. Uh, we're not going to be able to have the, the parents, uh, you know, jump on and, and know that their, their, their kids are going to be safe. Uh, that's a strategic uh, priority for universities. Similar with uh, organi other organizations like government and uh, corporate um, customers of ours, their, their employees are strategic. Their customers are strategic. Uh, they want to be able to, to uh, let everybody know that there is a plan in place, that they've got their safety at, at heart, and that they're going to take the, the appropriate steps to protect both the organization, the people, and then uh, and then their customers and, and uh, contractors, stakeholders, so that, so that uh, a lot of customers have found that that's very strategic to them in the focus on emergency mass notification. So to kind of summarize, uh, the, 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 the first few slides is, you know, Lotus provides that single point of activation. Uh, we're able to control all these assets. You see all the puzzle pieces come together. We're that glue that brings that, all these uh, devices together and provides a consistent, unified message across all your assets. So we're able to integrate all your notification assets. So, so you're, you're not having to go and individually activate. That gives you a very quick uh, activation time frame. And then finally, we fill in the gaps with with innovative alerting endpoints. What's meant by that is our alert beacon, our LED marquees, we provide uh, panic button capabilities. All the things that are uh, pictured on this slide here that's building, uh, we're able to control and activate from a single interface. That interface could be a web browser. It could be your mobile phone. We have an alert, alert mobile app for activations. Uh, it could be an automated alert, either coming from a weather service, a lightning service, uh, it could also be a CAP alert. That could come from many different ways. It's a, it's the CAP, CAP is Common Alerting Protocol, and that adheres to IPAWS, FEMA uh, uh, standards, and that allows us to receive messaging in. You know, it could be a presidential alert that you could have piped in uh, automatically. It could be uh, amber alerts, silver alerts. Those kind of things are all formatted in CAP to standardize. And we can all bring all those systems in and activate, we can create rules. We've got that threat watcher engine that allows you to filter those things. So you can say, hey, I want presidential alerts. I want to connect to NOAA and I only want tornado warnings because warnings are the most intimate in effect for my particular location. And then you can filter out all the other extraneous alerts if you wanted to automate any of those things. You could also have it sent to a small group that could be viewed and then sent out to a larger group. So activation brings that all together. Communication, we communicate over both wireless and wired connections, Wi-Fi, power over Ethernet. We've got some FM uh, radio subcarrier capabilities, some site-based paging and wireless options. 
So we can provide a lot of different options for connecting your devices like the alert beacon that flash sound, display the message, take uh, and, and attract attention. Uh, those devices are power over Ethernet or Wi-Fi or FM or, or wireless enabled and can be very easily uh, installed in your buildings. I had mentioned earlier about retrofitting a facility with no notification assets. That alert beacon is perfect for that. Uh, the LED marquee there provides a larger form factor. So if you've got high occupancy lobbies, uh, classrooms, uh, facilities, manufacturing floors, that provides that larger form factor of the, uh, the visual notification. We can also integrate with other devices like our uh, panic button to actually notify individuals. So you can have a panic button for an intruder alert, which is the demo I'll be providing for the cable TV interface. Uh, we provide the ability to take over uh, desktop computers. I mentioned earlier, we can do text-to-speech to PAs and fire evac systems. So if you, uh, you've got a text-based message, we can convert that and use those voice-based assets. Same with uh, text-to-speech to our giant voice. We're able to optimize text-to-speech, slow that down, provide the appropriate pauses so that's intelligible over outdoor speakers if you have those. We also have the ability to provide those speakers for you if, if uh, need be if you don't have solutions like that to cover large area outdoor areas, um, you know, be it parking lots, you name it. Uh, we're able to uh, provide a solution uh, to cover those large areas as well and chiefly leveraging the text-to-speech capabilities. The VoIP phone capability as well. Uh, we support major manufacturers for VoIP phones to be able to take those phones over, display the message on the screen, play audio tone as well. And then lastly, which we'll be focusing on, is our digital signage override and cable TV override. We're able to take over multi-vendor systems, so both digital signage and cable TV. So if you have multiple systems across campus, uh, maybe it's Visix, Scala, uh, different people bought different systems, different organizations within you uh, bought different systems at different times for different reasons. There's any number of reasons why you might have multiple vendors for digital signage. We're able to co communicate with all those, bring those together, and take them over uh, from the single interface. And then cable TV as well. We're able to integrate with multiple versions of cable TV, uh, head-end systems, uh, cable TV distribution, to be able to get that alert out very effect effectively. So to jump in a little bit more details on digital signage and cable TV override, digital signage and cable TV systems can easily transmit emergency communication in public high occupancy areas. Those are signs that you probably already have around your facility that we can take over and leverage as part of your emergency notification uh, strategy. Digital Digital signage override software transforms devices into intelligent emergency alerting appliances. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's displaying whatever your organization wants to display, whether it's production statistics, uh, wayfinder, uh, information about um, whatever is going on in your building. 99.9% .9 of the time, it's there. Intelligently, alerts can take it over in the event of that emergency, and not only take that over. But also, whenever that uh, cable TV ride conclude, override concludes, we'll provide and transition that content back up smoothly. So there isn't any, um, any going back and having to put additional content back up or turning things back on. It's a very automated process that, that, is, that provides minimal disruption. Uh, cable TV override overrides all screens and channels with a full screen notification. And both digital signage and cable TV override software integrate seamlessly with wall-mounted alert beacons other devices, LED marquees, uh, panic buttons could be activating digital signage and cable TV as well as our other devices, desktop, you, you, you name it. We're able to uh, include that as part of your activation. So some key features of uh, digital signage and cable TV override is that it rapidly is rapidly deployed and can be launched via our activation console uh, from any computer or mobile device. It's customizable. Overrides existing display with customized full screen alert message and scrolls to allow easy viewing from distance. So we format in a, in a way that uh, is very conducive to um, using those, those display methods. Personalization, uh, the alert can be personalized to your organization, displaying your organization's logo or any kind of uh, personal identifier so that when people see that, they, they don't see it as uh, part of the content, they actually see it as something that's coming from an official source within your organization and uh, know to take action. Also through the multimodal approach, 
they'll probably other see, see other uh, notification modes like desktops, alert beacons going off, in addition to the digital signage, and, and really emphasize that alert. And then finally, it's integrated. It's uh, software's designed to interface with external devices, including wall-mounted alert beacons, uh, LCD screens, LED marquees, uh, digital media displays. So any of the different display technologies you have, we're able to integrate with those. So how it works, an emergency alert can be initiated through a variety of sources. You know, your alert is console, the mobile app, panic button. So that message comes into the system. Uh, the notif you can select whether digital signage is used based, based upon the uh, notification that you're sending. Uh, the notification points check in with the server periodically to determine whether an alert has been initiated and devices are active and disabled. This is a key point. This, uh, the alert system is fully monitored and supervised. That's a requirement of the codes that at any one point in time that if one of your devices goes offline, one of your connections, we're able to report that and you're able to address that uh, without, uh, without delay. So uh, the, the system is a full-time monitor. We also report on when that digital signage and cable TV is activated, how long it's activated, uh, and then when it's, when it's uh, finally uh, uh, ended or, or deleted. So you're able to uh, report on every step of that. So finally, once it's acknowledged uh, and disseminated, the alert uh, goes to multiple uh, endpoints, and you've got control on where that goes. So to go and get into just a little bit more detail for, for those that are a little bit more uh, technical about things, uh, cable TV override options. There's a couple different ways we do it. Depending on the way you deploy your cable TV, we can either connect into your head end system, which is uh, larger campuses a lot of times run these. We can connect into a lot of the emergency broadcast equipment that's in place and required by law today. So you may already have the equipment required to, to interface with your KV, cable TV system. We simple, simply have developed two of those systems so that we can activate in the event of emergency. So we become your own personal campus emergency broadcast system, EAS system. So it's the same broadcast system that's activated federally. We just provide and the, the, the uh, codes allow for you to control that locally through the Alertus inter interface. If you don't have that or, and or want to go with, uh, instead of just the text-based uh, screen takeover for cable TV, we can set up and, uh, and take over those uh, cable TV uh, channels, switch it to a, uh, a PC-based or server-based multimedia display uh, processor that allow you to do a, a full scrolling, uh, do more of a multimedia design uh, and setup than, than relying just on text like an emergency broadcast system. So, you really scan, scan, uh, span the gamut on, on how fancy you want to get there. Uh, the other options for digital signage, it's slightly different technology. So the, uh, the key ways that a lot of our customers will do that is we'll either interface directly with the content management server. So this is what controls what's being displayed on all the different TVs. So we can go in and, and activate those, activate that uh, with, through, through your network. And that then takes over all the screens based upon that. Uh, there's also a way to go through and really target the players that are actually at the uh, at the screens. So we can target based on individual signs, locations, IP addresses, those kind of things, uh, and then also control multiple different signage systems with different players and be able to really bring together that multimedia, um, multi-vendor uh, uh, digital signage takeover and provide a solutions depending on whether you've got just a basic system sitting out there and building or a very sophisticated content management system, we've got a solution to provide digital cable TV activation for all those different scenarios. So with that said, uh, we'll go ahead and jump in and I'll do a quick demo so you can see us and how we, how we go ahead and uh, take over that emergency notification, how that appears within our user interface, and then also uh, you know, how, how that, that appears with the uh, multimedia cable TV uh, takeover. So right now I've uh, uh, brought my screen down to our, uh, our, our demo room here where you can see the, uh, the, the cable TV there with the different endpoints for Alertus. On my left, I'm going to go ahead and uh, log into our Alertus web interface uh, where you'll see the, uh, the alert going active. Uh, when that, that activates, and we'll, we'll jump in and I'll show you a little bit of the reporting. But I'm going to go ahead and jump up. We're going to um, simulate an intruder alert. This is going to be a panic button push. Instead of using the, the hardwired panic button, we're actually going to use the uh, desktop emergency panic button uh, integrated with our desktop alerting software. 
And we're going to activate that from a station with uh, something that we see, which is this right here. So we've got a PC uh, that's active. Uh, we've got our alerts desktop. We're going to go ahead and uh, push that emergency alert, intruder alert. That's going to go ahead and communicate, take over all the uh, different endpoints. And then uh, also you'll see our uh, cable TV takeover. So that, that uh, alert that was going on. We've got the beacons, uh, void phone notification. So we've got uh, all the different modes of facility why intruder lockdown has been issued. Follow standard shelter in place procedures. More information to follow. So you'll see that the, the full alert goes and cascades to all our devices. We've got that set up uh, to go to uh, the cable TV interfaces. Your digital signage interface will look very similar to this as well. Uh, and you can customize A facility that. wide intruder lockdown has been issued. Follow standard shelter in place procedures. It looks like, uh, More information looks like I also took over the desktop that I'm uh, running the demo from as well. So I apologize for that. Now you can see the. Uh, the uh, digital signage, all the different endpoints. I'm going to go ahead and uh, it'll cycle through. I'm going to cancel, go ahead and cancel that alert. Uh, I'll cancel that from the web interface. I could be canceling that from my uh, my mobile phone. I could cancel that um, many different ways. You could set up a panic button that would cancel uh, an alert. Uh, from there, we all know that uh, whenever you uh, send out a, a message, you want to make sure to send out the all clear so that everybody can return and normal uh, activity. I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually instead of doing an emergency, I'm going to do a preset where I've already uh, set up for the all clear. I can modify that. I've already set up so that, that all the parameters are covered. So my notification goes out to all devices. My alert beacons will uh, be green instead of red. Uh, and, and we'll get to that all clear. So here's, here's my confirmation. I can see that three alert beacons, my uh, two desktops and one of my cable TV rides available and will be activated. I'll go ahead and hit send, and that'll send the all clear out. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss that. And you'll you'll uh, you'll hear the, the beacons have a different tone. That's pre-programmed as part of the preset. The VoIP phone you'll hear is a different tone, and then we'll have the text to speech notification. I'm going to go ahead and uh, acknowledge all the different devices uh, as well. And I'll, I'll show you. So that gives you an idea of the, uh, the digital signage cable TV takeovers. And we've also got it coordinated with the text-to-speech. Uh, that, that'll be an All clear. The emergency condition is over. Return to normal activities. And then uh, just a quick uh, final points of the alertist notification All system. Clear. The is emergency that condition is over. Return to normal activities. So reporting is huge. I mentioned that supervision of uh, different endpoints and connectivity. So you'll see here, we've got our uh, device status report. I can see each and every alert beacon. The emergency condition is over. I can uh, see each and every alert beacon here uh, that's activated, are, are, are communicating with the system, different statistics about that, our desktops. And here's our cable TV override. So we've got all the different uh, IT information related to the cable TV overrides. So if that ever went offline, we would know that immediately. We can set up uh, notifications for that going offline and be able to address that. Uh, so the system's fully supervised to uh, provide code compliance. Some of the other uh, reporting that we provide are the activation, uh, the alert history, uh, the acknowledgement reports. So you'll see right here uh, in this reporting, We've got both the, uh, the alert that we sent out that was the lockdown, uh, and then we've also got details on the all clear. So I can bring that up. I can bring device activations. It's a report that provides confirmation that all our devices were, were active and, and uh, confirmed. So you'll see here our cable TV override. That happened within 10 seconds of this activation. Uh, acknowledgements. Now, uh, you know, the cable TV and uh, and uh, digital signage is more of a passive notification, so there aren't acknowledgments. But you, you remember seeing I got up and I silenced the alert beacons, I acknowledged those, I acknowledged desktops. You can see that reported here with the, the desktop acknowledgments. We uh, track how long it took to acknowledge, when it was acknowledged, uh, those kind of statistics. And then finally, uh, for the desktop piece, we were able to track the user recipient, so we know exactly who was logged in at the time of that activation being, uh, being received. 
So, uh, so reporting is a, uh, a big, big part of the Alerta system in, in confirming that all devices were activated, including your cable TV and digital signage interfaces, uh, to provide that after incident reporting. Uh, at that point, I think I've, uh, I'd like to kind of wrap up the demo. We uh, touched on some of the major, major aspects, showed the activation, the panic button, our user interface, showed how that all works back in with the uh, digital signage and desktop. So this concludes the demo portion. Go ahead and uh, bring, jump back into uh, the slides and turn it back over to Jamie. Uh, to cover upcoming Thanks, Ryan. Uh, so we'd now like to open up the floor for any questions you may have. Uh, we'll get to as many of those as we have time for. Uh, it looks like we already have a number of great questions that have come in. Um, if you would like to submit a question, uh, feel free to type it in the questions box, and again, we'll try to get to, the, to all of them. Um, so our first question um, is really talking about the digital signage override solution, ways that it can be activated. Uh, Ryan, can you review the different ways that the digital signage override solution can be activated? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, uh, I, I, I expanded a little bit to activating any of our capabilities because the digital signage is just one endpoint that we activate. Uh, within our user interface, you can do it on a web-based login. So if you've got a username and, and password access, you can go to any PC within your organization, sit down, uh, type in the URL, and log in, and, and activate that. Now you've got the option when you're doing an activation, you include cable TV or exclude cable TV or digital signage. So you've really got the control of how you activate our different endpoints from that user interface. Uh, beyond a, uh, a desktop PC, you know, that's not always uh, feasible to sit down in front of a PC during these events. You could also do a panic button activation. Any of the panic buttons that are configured in our system can be configured to activate a message on digital signage or any of our endpoints. Next is we also have a mobile uh, Alertus activation capability. So we support a mobile uh, interface for both Android and Apple to be able to activate on the fly. So you saw I activated the all clear from the preset. I could have logged into my iPhone, uh, click, clicked on the alert, and, uh, and sent that all clear from my iPhone while I was uh, responding to the event uh, and really leading that situation. The last is automating that capability. We can receive any number of RSS feeds, web feeds, uh, messaging from outside the system. Uh, our customers will a lot of times connect our systems to NOAA weather alerts. That's a uh, no-cost feed for you that we can monitor, and you can filter that down and activate uh, digital signage, cable TV, or any of our other devices with automated feeds. So if you wanted to have tornado warnings come up uh, for, for your zip code and really, really target it down to that specific facility, we're able to automate that piece. There's also other services that, that we can uh, get you connected up with and, uh, and provide for lightning detection. So if that's important to your organization, whether you've got uh, ball fields out, outside sporting for NCAA events, or even you know if it's an IT organization, knowing when lightning's coming through to power down certain assets to be on high alert for, uh, for outages, those kind of things. We can really automate a lot of those, those feeds and be able to do notification to digital signage uh, without human intervention. So many different ways to activate. Our next question uh, really gets into codes and mandates. So thinking about um, how different uh, organizations or really even different countries, um, their mass certification system standards can vary. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess the question really is, you know, how do they vary? But more specifically, in looking at Canada versus the U.S., can you speak to um, when Canada might adapt MNS uh, into their code similar to what the United States has done? Definitely. Well, there's, there are a, a variation of, of codes, uh, U.S. and throughout the world. Uh, the NFPA is very popular in the U.S. Sometimes it's adopted in some, some of Canadian uh, provinces or, or municipalities. Uh, you know, states like California have their own fire, state fire marshal uh, code, code enforcement. New York City's got its own little thing. So yes, a lot of the different uh, local municipalities adopt different versions. A lot of them come to the same conclusion and, and goals of multimodal notification, integration with all assets, getting the word out in many different ways for special needs individuals. So there's a, a very a lot of commonality within those codes. Now one, one of the things we are seeing that's uh, starting to get adopted more, more freely that we do see in Canada is UL. UL starting to imp implement uh, certifications to, to uh, certify mass notification solutions. 
So we, we may, may see a variance on, on local codes, but we may see it starting to come together versus find, based upon UL and unified uh, laboratories having a, uh, a certification. So uh, we're really seeing, and, and this is just a function of generally the codes that apply are controlled locally, uh, but the alert system has so many capabilities, it's, it's taken a lot of that into account that we're able to provide a code compliance solution depending on whether you're, you've got a state or local uh, uh, jurisdiction that, that's requiring certain things. So very flexible in that, that matter. So as the codes evolve, the, the alert systems will be flexible and be able to continue to adhere to those code systems. During the first part of your presentation, um, you really covered the alert system as a whole, and you talked about the different products and offerings that are available depending on an organization's needs. Can you go into a little bit more depth um, on the Alertus USB panic button, um, how it works, and how it integrates into the system? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, excellent question, and uh, that is one of the newer uh, Alertus offers where we're able to take any computer that has the Alertus desktop capability on that and turn it into a panic button. Now, there, there is a uh, webinar we did directly uh, focused on panic button, panic button capabilities, uh, so Jamie could provide that to you uh, for additional details, but generally that, that allows you to do one of multiple things. One, you can either click on the desktop, the Alertus icon, and select the panic button and activate that directly on your desktop. It provides hotkey capabilities. So you can set up a specific hotkey, so Control-S or something of that effect, something that everybody with the organization can be trained to activate to activate the panic button for a personal panic button. And then to the question, the USB-based panic button, that plugs into the USB uh, port on the laptop or PC, and whenever that's pushed, that automatically activates it. So it takes really the, the point and click, the thinking, the searching, right down to a very simple panic button push, which activates through our desktop, communicates the alert system, and sets off a preset alert based upon that panic button push. Thinking about the alert solution and how it's implemented at a variety of organizations, um, what kind of ITS background workload is needed to support the system, and is it something that would merit a full-time position? The, uh, the IT support of the system is really fairly minimal. Uh, we've got, we need the, uh, the IT group to engage in the beginning to get, get everything installed provision everything, get it pushed out to the different uh, hardware devices, software, software desktops, those kind of things. But once the system's installed, the maintenance is really fairly simple. It, it, it's a standard routines that your, your IT shop is, ready, is used to doing, providing uh, maintenance of that server, uh, patches for the, uh, the uh, you know, operating systems, those kind of things. So it fits into your uh, IT infrastructure very easily, and uh, you know, there isn't something special or unique about the alert system that that, uh, that causes the, the IT system to have to change what they do today. It's just one more uh, piece of software server that they're, they're maintaining. The alert system is very, very reliable. Uh, so once it's set up, there's uh, minimal engagement or, you know, it can be easily integrated into their procedures. And then from a uh, training and use and administrative uh, capability, uh, we provide uh, our support upgrades uh, packages called uh, ENS to provide all the training and support you need. So if uh, you know the IT person doesn't need to be an expert in the Alertus system, if they want to do an upgrade, they give us a call. We'll, we'll jump on. We can do a screen share, help step them through that, uh, every process of that. If it comes to your, your activators, your users, uh, we can set up training sessions for them uh, as you uh, have new users uh, joining. So there's really no need to dedicate an IT person uh, full-time or even you know, part-time it becomes a part of their, their use of, their use of the system, and then when when you need that extra support, we're there to uh, provide it. So we still have time to address a number of other questions. Please do continue to submit those in the chat box, and uh, we will get to those as time allows. Um, I would like to quickly go over some upcoming webinars. Um, we have a really interesting webinar coming up in April that's going to focus on our outdoor emergency notification solution. Um, it'll really speak to the benefits of uh, that type of, of setup, as well as uh, integrating other um, other pieces of the Alertus solution into um, Outdoor Giant Voice, any other components that you may already have on your campus, on your uh, in your facility. Um, in May, we will also have um, another Alertus system overview webinar. 
Um, this will be a really great session that will focus on our innovative text-to-speech technology. Highly recommend that as um, a great solution to integrate into um, a PA system. Um, again, fully integrated with all of the Avertis products. And finally, in June, uh, we will focus on emergency mass signification integration. A very important component to really any organization that's researching mass signification systems, um, not only for, um, uh, for cost benefit, but for longevity purposes. So uh, if you're interested in any of these or learning more about the upcoming webinars, um, check them out at www.alertus.com forward slash Alertus webinar series. Um, again, this webinar is being recorded. If you'd like a recording, feel free to email us at marketing at alertus.com. So with that, we'll jump back into the Q&A. Um, our next question goes back to cable TV override. Um, Brian, the question is, can cable TV override be used over a university's network channel or channels? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we'll, we're, we've got the ability to, for many different distribution means, different uh, you know, head-end equipment, those kind of things, to be able to uh, take over those, those channels, uh, be it analog or digital channels. Uh, we could absolutely do that. We could do it on a university basis. You could do it on every channel. You could take, take over a specific channel if you wanted to, whether it's the university broadcast channel uh, or maybe, you know, some of our customers actually will put information out. It'll be a digital signage type solution, but what they're actually doing is uh, tuning every TV to a cable TV station that, that, that the university controls content on and uh, displays information. So any number of solutions or uh, technologies, we're able to... Uh, take over that that digital signage cable TV channel uh, that, that you either control all content on or you're just distributing the content on campus through your head end. And thinking about the alert solution and how the different products can work together, can you speak to how um, the Alertus app, the mobile devices that we offer, can work with the Alertus desktop notification? Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, think of uh, our Alertus uh, mobile app as, you know, Alertus desktop in your pocket on the go, mobile. Uh, it's going to display the exact same message you're sending to desktop, to digital signage, uh, but it will display it on an uh, Apple or Android mobile device. Uh, that app uh, running on, on the device will receive that. It will be a push notification, so it will bring it to the, 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 uh, the front so that it will be immediate, obtrusive, and they'll be able to see that the text of that message whenever they look at their mobile phone. Uh, but then also, when they click into that, it'll bring a, up a screen override that'll provide the message, uh, provide them the ability to acknowledge that message. So it really takes a lot of the functionality for desktop and puts it in, on a mobile format uh, on devices that, that many people carry today. And uh, lastly, on that, that mobile phone uh, application, there's other options. If your organization has a, ha, builds their own mobile app, there's other options that instead of, you know, they can either download the Alertus app, but we can work with you to kind of customize it and embed our code in, in your own organization's app so that, you know, students or employees or faculty don't have to do download something different. If they're downloading a, uh, an app for your organization that includes many different things that's very valuable to them, we can slide in the emergency notification capability and do that, that basically Alertus desktop takeover, but for the mobile format. We have a, one final question here um, in thinking about customization when um, executing an emergency notification. What customization options are available uh, when using the digital signage override? That's a good question. Uh, yeah, the, the customized customization capabilities, you're able to go through and customize the message, where it's delivered, how it's delivered. With uh, the digital signage, uh, there, there's the ability to target the notification to specific digital signage systems, uh, depending on how everything's set up. So you can select portions of the campus, uh, which digital signage systems you're sending the message to, uh, how long they're displaying, uh, so, so you could uh, select the duration of that message. So you really customize a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, you know, parameters on sending that message. Also, uh, as I mentioned, you can customize the actual uh, digital signage uh, output by adding your organization's logos for source identification. So when, when they see it, they know that's coming from your emergency management department as well. 
Uh, so there's there's a lot of different ways to customize that. The cable TV override, you you kind of you kind of set up and, and decide how you want that to be displayed. Uh, if you go through your emergency broadcast equipment that might be already on site, that's got a standard format, so that'll display the text. But if you go with more of a multimedia option, you're actually able to uh, select different um, you know display methods for your your cable TV uh, activation. So. So there, there are uh, many different ways of targeting and also controlling how exactly that, that digital signage or cable, cable TV uh, takeover uh, displays within your, your campus. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, we'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. If you have additional questions, please feel free to email us at marketing at alertus.com. We'll be happy to provide additional information. Um, you can find additional information on the digital signage override as well as the cable TV override on our website. Um, the links are on your screen. Um, and again, thank you for joining us. Have a great afternoon.